All right, today we're gonna be getting these heads clean to where we want them. At least clean enough. I should actually dress up in them. Alright, so you can see most of this rust is pretty thick, it's on there pretty good, all the loose stuff, most of the loose stuff at least, you have this crap in this thin area here, but no one really sees those. So, what we're going to do is we're going to treat these just like we did. Well, not just like we did. We're going to protect these because we don't want these to go uh, rusty on us. So we could heat them up, do the oil finish on them. I'm going to try a different technique that I've been willing to wanting to try really badly. And that is to actually boil it. Uh, when you boil the red rust, which is, I don't know, ferric. It's all ferric oxide, but because FE302 it turns into FE304, which is the black stuff. Uh, I think that's called hematite, and that's more stable. And then we can oil the hematite, and it also gives it a black look, and it'll match the rest of those covers we did. But the, the reason I'm first hesitant to, to, to boil it is because we, uh, well, heating the cast iron, the whole thing's cast iron. If we want to heat the whole thing, I'm concerned about it warping. I could do it in the oven. But that's a big hot piece and putting oil on would be difficult. I might end up doing that if the boiling doesn't work, but you know, yeah, it's worth a shot. Before we get there though, we're gonna remove these valve guides. I have replacement valve guides, so we don't want these. In fact, these are worn really badly, so we really don't want these. So we're gonna be punching out these valve guides. And once we finish boiling and everything, we're gonna put the new ones in. Treat the, uh, you know, regrind the valves, deglaze the cylinders, and then they should be decently ready to mount with new pistons. So let's work on that. So we want to punch out these old valve guys, so we need a rod that goes in there. Now this is definitely a hard piece to hold. I'll be careful about these fins, so I'm gonna hold it close to this section here. Let's try driving that out. Nope, not on the valve. I'll be careful about this. So, hmm. Everything is tough choices. All right, let's give it a shot. I'd rather press these out, but I don't have a press. They might just be rusted solid. I think that actually moved. Well, there we go, we can see. Actually starting to lift off the surface there, right here. So we should be able to just keep going on it. Nice and carefully and see how much progress we can make.
All right, final fucking Lee. Y'all saw me struggling really hard with that first one. Ended up shattering at the tip. Most of these did. They're only cast iron. But it shattered so badly I couldn't get any movement going on on it. And well, I had to start drilling it out. And well, that's pretty much what I'm left with now. Because these pieces. The good thing is it is cast iron, so it is pretty brittle. And you can just go in there... I was sawing it to cut into little shorter pieces without trying to damage the actual cylinder casting. So then I could hit it with a little punch and start just breaking off bit by bit. After I was drilling most of it out, you can see how thin it got there. As opposed to how it starts out as. So, but the other ones came along really well. I think the lesson on this one, if I had to do it again, would be uh, extra flat punch and smaller hammer and just a lot more blows. Getting with a big hammer on it and trying to give it a good whack, you're definitely harder to shatter with these. Even more so, I would rather use a press, but I don't have a press. So I had to drift it out with a punch and a hammer. But there's the old ones already out. I do have the new ones. We're not going to put them in yet because I'm going to treat the rest on these first. And to do that, we're just going to give the inside of the ports a quick brushing. Knock off some of the uh, sud and other things out of there because those are the dirtiest. And then we're just going to take it inside and, well, put it in the boil. See if it turns black or not. All right, let me try to do this without fogging the lens up, but I've been boiling this for like uh, 20 minutes or so, and uh, I mean, maybe it's a little darker, but it's just like a darker brown than it is a darker, you know, a, a black. For reference, I have the other piece over here. Just put them side by side. It's Pretty much the same, it pretty much looks the same, but like wet and just slightly, oops, slightly darker. So there's the movie on. So there's, there's the old one, and here's a new one. And yeah, it's like, it's just the same thing, but wet. So it doesn't really seem to have done anything. Uh, there's two reasons for that. I didn't use distilled water because I don't have any. I couldn't get any. Uh, and it seems like, you know, sometimes... There's too many minerals in your water, it's not going to work. So, okay, that could be a reason. Uh, maybe I just need a boiler for longer, but it's been quite a long time already, so... Low impatience is kicking in, so... All right, today we're deglazing cylinders, installing new valve guides, and then lapping the valves. 
So to do those, I bought flex hone. Some call it a dingle ball hone. Flex hone is a real name for it. This is the right size for uh, this cylinder. At least it's supposed to be, I didn't check yet. Yep, where's the right size? Ooh, that's a relief. We got a valve lapping, com lapping compound. This is a uh, pipe that Permatex sells that starts out at a coarse grit and becomes a fine grit as you use it. So we'll, we'll see how well it works. I might just go back to a traditional one. Normally you just use individual grits to, to do it. And then also, I think you just saw me in that opening shot. I just made this little valve driving tool. So when I was driving these out, I was just using steel punches and I had a brass punch I was using, but it was too thin. And I decided I wanted to, something a little softer. So then when I drove these in, I wouldn't have to worry about reaming out that bore and damaging that. So this is aluminum, uh, 6061, I believe. So this should help us actually drive these in and not ruin anything. So that's important. Before we install those, we're gonna deglaze the cylinders so they're actually Actually, we'll uh, we'll install those valve guides first. So then we do So then when we do the cylinder and then the valve lapping, we can clean it all up at once, I believe. So let me get some Scotch Brite and I'll just clean these bores up. They flash rust while the valves are out. Got while the guides are out. Just because these were very clean on the inside, so just gotta remove that quickly. And then we can uh, heat these up gently with a torch and then drive new valves we have. Uh, drive the new valves back in. All right. So we'll do that next, clean these up, and then we'll start uh, driving them in. All right. Just clean those out. I ran, just ran scotch right through them with the drill just to get all the surface rust off of them. And I just uh, sprayed them down with some parts cleaner just to get that grid and rust out. So you can install the valves now and let me double check that these are the right direction. Yep. So here's one that came out. You can see the clean surface here was where it got driven out of. This dirty surface is what was sticking out. So if you look at that, we want to match it. So this, the long end gets driven back in. Oops. And then the short end sticks out. So I'll grab the torch, I'll gently heat up some of that cast iron base metal here. Alright, that's good. Clean off the part really quick. Make sure the surface is nice and clean. All right. Grab a hammer. More gentle hammer, actually. Start driving it in and see what we can do. Broke it. Oh, that sucks. Well, I'm gonna have to punch that back out now. Damn it, that really sucks. Dang. You okay? Yeah, I'm 
fine. Broke the part, I'm gonna have to get another one. Foul guys are hard to drive in. Damn. No, that's not the problem. They should just go in smoothly. They're just finicky. And they're, they're just fragile because they cast iron. That's why they switched to the brass ones. Because this shit doesn't happen. Oh well. I'll, I it. Here. I'll just keep going on them. Alright, well. Try another one. This is really a press job. All right, there we go. So that one's installed properly now. No, I did break that other one. Which is a real bummer, but well, wasn't gentle enough. So yeah, drive these in. A lot of slow taps, that's what they need. I'm gonna have to order another one for this, but I'm going to uh, go ahead and just clean that hole out again. It's like punch I was using had a little rest on it. And I'll try to uh, try drive another one in.
I'm coming out now. Hit. There we go. Alright. Start tapping in another one. So you get a better picture? Huh? Alright, there's the neighbor talking. Slowly but surely. Oh, that sound it changed the tone. Like, freaking me out a little bit. Hear the tone changing on the punch. Still coming along. Still feels all right. Wow, it's really driving in there. Or better the punch than the uh than the piece. Damn it! Hey there. So I need to press these valve guides into this cylinder head. And well I hate hammering on these because then I might upset the metal and I might lose the bore because these are to size already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a press. So I got this little 410 bottle jack from Harbor Freight, and I was lucky enough to get the steel 
off of an old gym weight rack. And this thing is begging to be made into a little press. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove these. I got two of these, one for each side. Now I'm gonna take some of this material that used to span the width. Cut this up to span the width for the actual bridges for this thing now. And that should be good enough to start working on it and start using this thing. So I'm going to start measuring against it and start cutting pieces. All right, finally fully assembled. I think this thing's gonna work out really well for what I want. We should be able to just place this with that steel sheet. Yep, and that's pretty good. We should be able to press anything between here and there. And we should be able to move these down uh, if we need to. This thing has a five inch throw, so that means it goes out to Right here. So we should be able to handle a lot with this. I don't really know if it can handle four tons, but I, I don't really need it to handle four tons, so it's fine. Hey there! You can ignore the neighbor's music. It's nice and sunny, so everyone's coming out today. But in my last video, you saw I finished my frame for my press. This should be at least enough, strong enough to just press some valve guides in, nothing crazy. So I have my four ton bottle jack here. And one of the things I have to figure out is how to hold this. I have to orientate this up like that. 
and press the valve guides in that way. And that sounds crazy, but the reason I have to do that is this valve jack only works in one orientation. It has to be up and down like this to actually move. So as it is right now, if I pump it, you can see it's moving the piston. But if I flip it upside down and try to move it, it doesn't move it. It doesn't actually, it doesn't pump fluid into the main piston area or reservoir and move the piston. So I have to have this on the bottom. So I gotta figure out some way to orientate the cylinder and the up here and hold it in place so I can hold the valve guide and just press it in gently. So I'm gonna go through a couple iterations to try to figure that out and I'll let you know when I have it. All right, this is what I came up with. I have it strapped through the bore on both sides with these little cheap, cheap straps. And it's holding it up enough. It's not all the way, but that should be enough where I can set it once I get a little pressure on it. And I'll be able to start pumping away on the bottle jack and get it to start pressing. So I'm gonna put the camera down and get you in a good view. We're gonna try press that valve stem in or that valve guide in. All right, it's a pretty good view. I cleaned the holes before I uh, ran it in, and I clean off this valve stem, our valve guide. I keep calling it the wrong thing. So let's try. And we're gonna try to get a strap over on this end too. Let's see if that helps. Let me see if I can actually shove these over. Okay, it's pretty tight. All right, so. Make sure the jack's locked. It's got a little block of aluminum to help press with. You recognize that as the punch I made for driving them last time that didn't work. Found the old ashes, comes the new. truth now let's try to set in that's definitely not right hold on It's tricky because they're not actually perfect flats. Like this doesn't, uh... there you go. But also it doesn't go in perfectly perpendicular. It's actually tilted a little. It makes it a little trickier. I'll grab this little wedge, shim this up a little. Hopefully it shims in a way that helps. Okay.
Oops. something decent. Let's see what I can get. And it's starting to go. right there. All right, it's starting to go. Yeah, it's driving in. All right. Should be easier to maintain now. And I should be able to crimp this up a bit more. All right. Lock this back down. Oops, there it is that. All right. I'm going to try to match the angle now that it's at with this shim. So I need more shimming. Not really sure if this is going to help quite a lot, but I don't know how it does. All right, that helps a bit. Okay. Let's give it another go. Lock down. Something is creaking. the world. Oh, almost there. I think it's the wood actually, honey. There we go. Fully seated. Much easier than punching it in. Wow. Much better. All right. That's, uh, that's one on this and one on that, so two more to go. Let's hope I don't break any. Hope I didn't jinx myself there. Sweet. All right, the valve stems are pressed in. Now we can go in, uh, clean them up in case they got deformed a little bit, lap the valves, and uh, assemble the uh, valve trains. There's a uh, cups that go over these and springs. Put the valves in with the keepers. Uh, wow. Yep, definitely recommend doing this with a press rather than with a torch and a punch, especially for these cast iron ones. Oh my God, it's so much safer and easier. Not like safer like I'm in danger. Safer like these things that aren't gonna goddamn break on you like they did to me. Yeah, use a press or buy extras if you wanna drive them in with a punch for when you break them. All right, I'm gonna get this thing off this fixture, get this off the table, and then we're gonna look at, uh, start lapping those valves. This is getting exciting now.